This is a video that's happening. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised no one has done a deeper dive with this concept, considering the almost instinctual comparison most people have when first hearing about this show. I know that's how I described it to my friends. Yeah, it's basically Osmosis Jones the anime. But I want to get into things a bit more, and really look at how much they overlap, seeing how apt that description really is. That said, I'm going to abstain from determining which one is better through this comparison. By all means, come to your own conclusions if you want, but simply I'm looking at aspects of each and how similar or different they are. So crack open your high school biology textbook, and let's do this. So one thing I want to address before we really get into this video, I'm not going to be comparing Cells at Work to Osmosis Jones. Let me explain. I'm instead comparing it to the movie's perhaps lesser-known little brother, Ozzy and Drix. You know, the movie's TV show spin-off from the early 2000s that, from the look of it, inspired both Pacific Rim and Attack on Titan? Yeah, just go ahead and add this to the mecha genre somewhere between Ratatouille and Darling in the Franks. But the reason why I'm doing this is I just think it's more fair to both. For one, the Osmosis Jones movie had a budget of $70 million. Produced by David Productions or not, the entire series of Cells at Work doesn't come close to touching that. The TV series is also more apt because things like pacing and introduction of characters are more analogous and therefore better for comparison. So with all that being said, let's start with some commonalities. At first glance, it's clear both shows are opting for a comedic approach to their scientific source material. And yes, generally speaking, I would toss both into the comedy genre. In addition to Slice of Life, obviously. Also, both very much utilize more of an episodic story structure than a serialized one, with new antagonists popping up each episode. Which makes sense for stories set inside us. I mean, there's a myriad of crap our bodies go through on a daily basis to defend against an equal myriad of pathogens because you don't wash your hands. Derek. Of course, this also means that the conflict, whatever it may be, is likely to be wrapped up by the end of an episode. It wouldn't really be fun to watch a prolonged, monotonous battle with the flu that lasts four episodes, only to have it then show up again a mere two episodes later as a slightly different strain. So in both series, our characters end up combating a variety of villains. And because of this, at least I suspect, each series smartly casts one of its main characters as a white blood cell. And while in Ozzy and Drix we don't learn what specific kind of leukocyte Ozzy is, I think it's fair to toss him into the same category as the white blood cell in Cells at Work. That being a neutrophil, because these are usually among the first responders to a foreign body. This, though, is mostly where the comparisons end. So let's move on to how each differs when portraying this world within our bodies. From an overall accuracy standpoint, Cells at Work wins, hands down. Being fair to Ozzy and Drix, though, it never came off like it was trying to be educational. Barring a few key terms being tossed around without much context, there aren't many attempts to convey complex biological processes. Cops wheel blasters loaded with gastric acid, white blood cells are autonomous beings, but red blood cells are demoted to seemingly currency for the sake of this one blood bank pun, and no germs are ever outright killed, just arrested or expelled from the body. I get it's a kid's show, but still. These, and that whole Cellulum Ex Machina Jaeger thing that happens as early as the second episode, make it clear that this series is leaning more into fun than anything else. Cells at Work, though, does a pretty nice job, all things considered, balancing education with entertainment. There are, of course, the times they pause the action to explain a concept, but what I love is that the small details the series doesn't even directly address are also incredibly accurate. Just in Episode 1, the platelets are shown unloading boxes of calcium ions, which are a vital component in blood clotting. Likewise, the pathogen that hides using red blood cell is something that it actually does in real life to evade our immune systems, and that's referencing research as recent as 2013, just to give you an idea how up-to-date some of this stuff is. And speaking of red blood cells, the jackets they wear are actually reversible depending on whether they are oxygenated or deoxygenated, bright and dark red respectively. Yeah, I don't know how pervasive this myth still is, but despite how your veins look, deoxygenated blood is not blue. I could go into more detail, but instead, if you're interested, I'll link below to several Reddit threads from an actual doctor in residency who's going through each episode with a fine-tooth comb. But back to the contrast, for the most part the characters do their jobs without much deviation. Meanwhile, on the Ozzy and Drix side, they do all kinds of things outside their roles. They actively sleep, go to concerts, and have... democracy? There's an internal affairs joke in there somewhere. 
But yeah, in this world, it's basically implied that one or a few cells are capable of determining, quite specifically, how their body will react and respond in different scenarios. This leads us into one of the biggest differences in storytelling between the two series. That is, in Ozzy and Drix, there's an ongoing narrative outside the body, where we follow Hector. Typically, that's how every episode begins, as we're shown glimpses of his day-to-day -day life, and thus given context for how he gets exposed to various viruses and bacteria. In Cells at Work, we've yet to, and I suspect we won't, see the outside world or person they're in. Because the focus is put squarely on the cells. And while it's down to preference more than anything as to which you prefer, I think the absence of an additional, albeit related, storyline helps the pacing. Because even sacrificing a few minutes each episode to show Hector's perspective in Ozzy and Drix speeds up the internal conflict by a pretty good amount. And so every episode, it feels like things get back to normal a little too quickly. Your mileage may vary, but that's just what I've noticed. Now, before we get to probably the most contentious portion of the video, I'm gonna make a note when it comes to animation. I don't want to directly compare the two in terms of quality, partially because one was made in 2018 and I can watch it in HD, meanwhile the other I have only crappy online rips to look at, but also because their styles are just so wildly different. For example, due to the kind of series it is, characters in Cells at Work aren't going to squash and stretch like Ozzy often does. Likewise, his series doesn't handle action animation in near the same way. That said, while anime is often known for cutting corners for budget reasons, the people behind Ozzy and Drix might have also had trouble making ends meet. It is entirely speculation on my part, but I say this because several times the TV show reuses clips from the movie. It's noticeable because there's a distinct jump in quality for a few seconds, and this happens as early as episode 2. This is another reason why I felt these two would be on more even footing versus comparing Cells at Work to the film. I'll reiterate that I have no idea what was going on behind the scenes, but at best, it was laziness. For the rest of the scenes, feel free to compare and judge them on your own, but if nothing else, I found this interesting and worth noting. So with that taken care of, it's time to talk about the last part I'll be contrasting. Each series' creativity. And just as I said there was no contest for Cells at Work with regards to accuracy, I think you're expecting me to say how it's just the opposite for inventiveness. And you're not wrong, Ozzy and Drix does appear to be the more creative of the two, especially since it sacrifices a lot of the aforementioned scientific accuracy in service of originality. And just comparing something like characters, it's easy to see which put more effort in. Clearly, it's Cells at Work. Yeah, you heard me right. I said this might be contentious, but let me explain. Yes, Ozzy and Drix has a lot of creative backgrounds, characters, and the like. The villain designs are especially good, but there seems to have been a lack of effort put into some of the actual main characters. We're talking about cells in the human body, specialized to an absurd degree to fit their role, yet Ozzy, a white blood cell, the police chief, a muscle cell, and the mayor, I think a brain cell, all look absurdly similar. And the diversity we see outside the main cast only makes this design choice stand out even more. But even there I have a critique, because it's hard to tell what these varied designs are supposed to represent. Cells? Friendly bacteria? What? They're all so different they're unidentifiable. It strikes me as strokes of random rather than focused creativity. Cells at Work, meanwhile, does a better job with this. The world itself may not be as creative or fluid as that of Ozzy and Drix, but I would argue that the designs are far more inventive. Each has a unique color palette that immediately makes them stand out against different cells, and at the same time, their designs often reflect aspects of the cell. The trade-off, though, is that yes, individual cells of the same type may look samey, and their personalities are also similar to their fellow specialized brethren, barring a few exceptions. But ultimately, I think that restricting the designs to humans for cells at work forces the creators to be more clever, both with designs and just how to convey certain ideas. And a lot of the humor, at least for me, comes from the cells adhering to those aforementioned personality traits pretty religiously. Like in the food poisoning episode, for example, Basophil just spouting philosophical edgelord BS entertained me to no end. On the opposite side of this, though, Ozzy and Drix does allow for their characters to have more of a personality not dictated by their supposed purpose. And to the show's credit, that helps you feel more invested. Plus, the focus is always on them. Whereas, while Red and White Blood Cell do appear in every episode, their actual purpose and prominence in the story is dependent on what they can actually do in real life. Red Blood Cell, for example, isn't likely to ever take down an invading pathogen, and White Blood Cell won't be delivering oxygen in Red's stead if she happens to be sick one day. 
so I would say Ozzy and Drix is definitely more creative in that department. But when especially talking about something like creativity, personal preference is always going to be a factor. And being a bit of a biology nerd, I think I appreciate the accuracy in cells at work more than a lot of people. <laughs> Gigic. <-gick. laughs> Mother's basement. <laughs> But even ignoring my bias, I have to admit that I rewatched more of Ozzy and Drix than I probably had to in preparation for this video. If that was mostly out of nostalgia for when I watched it in my younger years, I can't say for sure. But regardless, there is certainly a level of enjoyability that comes with tossing the rulebook out the window and having fun with a concept. Science be damned. But those are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. Do you even remember Ozzy and Drix? If you've given Cells at Work a shot, what do you think of it? Let me know down below. As always, thank you for watching, and an especially big thanks goes out to my awesome patrons, Penguin Panda Zero, Overjoyed Soup, MV Pino, James Morton, Mr. Idealist, Marbled Ranger, Julian Reyes, and everyone else whose support helps make videos like these possible. If you would like to join those awesome people, click the right to visit my Patreon page, click the left to subscribe, check out my t-shirts, and don't forget both that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell and you should ring that notification button. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, stay awesome, and I'll see you next time.